Hey everyone, Sleepy Reader here with a little handheld camera action. I just finished reading Batman and Robin Eternal number five about a minute ago. Um, and I enjoyed it okay. Um, maybe I have lowered my expectations from the pre because of the disliking the previous issue, and this was the same writer, sort of the same art team. There were actually three pencilers on this. Um with Scott Eaton, the penciler from last issue, being the lead, the main penciler here. And there still was sort of some noticeable stiffness when you got actual fight scenes, but other than that, I wasn't too, you know, the art was workmanlike and did the job. There's, you know, your action scene that just doesn't quite click. But I thought we got some interesting revelations, uh, plot moving forward and plot twists with uh, Tim Drake's Hidden Away Parents. I don't know if that's an established thing or something that's revealed just in this issue. Um, and I don't know if his parents have been slightly hypnotized. I don't think so. In the end, I decided not. At first, I thought they had been. Um, and, you know, that the there was added confusion there with the way they sort of responded to having weird people come into their house. Um, and I guess I felt like there was, they were expanding what the, uh, what the, what Grayson's spiral hypnos could do. And, uh, yeah, so the fights were unconvincing, especially the one between Grayson and, um, What's the name of this woman who comes in and attacks him? And then the house fights back, so the house kind of saves Grace. And that was kind of a nice twist, I guess. But it was a little confusing what her weapon could do and how she was defeated by the house. Not totally clear. I guess she was zapped by something. I don't know. Where'd her weapon go, even? Um, some god weapon that she had. Um... But I can forgive that because the twists were fun. The um, Now are we supposed to think that Red Robin is not a plant by Mother? That when we heard him talk about Mother in the last issue, it was actually his real mom he was talking to? It just didn't seem that way. I'm going to have to go back and look at it. But I feel like maybe he still is controlled by Mother. I'm not sure. The other big question in my mind that... The um, orphan, I think is his name, shows up, and Bluebird knows him, and he knows Bluebird. And all I could think of is that it's her father who, you know, I haven't tracked everything going on in Bluebird's life. The last I remember, her father is a small-time villain who was in jail. Um, if her father was the orphan all along and is as has been indicated here, for many years addicted to the fear gas. That seems a little surprising that we never heard that before. Um, so I don't know if we're supposed to think it's her father, if we're supposed to think it's someone else. There's certain un lack of clarity there. Um, and we do now know, I do like that we now know that... Um, uh, Cassandra Kane has worked with the orphan and was perhaps raised by the orphan, or was she raised by mother? Were they both raised by mother? So it was a slightly muddled issue, but it's only now that I'm talking about it that I really think of that. It's kind of weird how he's just in the slightest bit phased by having his arm chopped off. It's enough to make him run away, and they don't run after him. Um... I don't know if that's because he's spreading his fear gas around. There seems to be an explosion going on. They do plant a tracker on him, or, you know, Red Robin does. I'm not Red Robin. Blue Bluebird does. So, yeah, overall, you know, not... Uh, it was a good enough issue moving along the plot, and I don't really have a whole lot more to say than that. I... I do like, I just do like a lot of the little elements that seem to be developed here, all, even though they're not totally clear to me and I want more clarity going forward. 
the relationship between Orphan and um, Crane, the Scarecrow, and the relationship with Cassandra Kane, and the relationship with the still unseen mother. That I mean, that's all very intriguing, and and we still got the sense of a very tight plot focused on um, all these sidekick type of characters in the Bat World. So, um, so yeah, I feel like the uh, the series is moving along a pace, and I look forward to next week's issue. Uh, I may next read uh, Detective Comics. We'll see. Oh, brother. It's only about ten minutes later, and I've already finished Batman Detective Comics. It was certainly a fast read, and I certainly perceived it as being filler. Um, if I had to guess, since on the last page it says... Next issue, Robin War, that um, the writer needed an issue to fill before he had to deal with the next crossover, um, and he needed to get Batman, you know, not deal with Gordon's life in Gotham, because that's being dealt with in the regular Batman book, so... Um, you know, when I first heard Tomasi was coming back on Detective Comics, it did occur to me that maybe I should just wait till Bruce Wayne Batman comes back before jumping back on Detective, even though it was Tomasi. But this issue, you know, it, in a way it was like old Batman or old Justice League, really old Batman or really old Justice League, where there's a a problem to solve and in this case, through pseudo-detective work, Gordon solves it like they used to solve things through pseudo-scientific thinking, supposedly, you know, because I wasn't too convinced by the detective work here. And it was this crazy, you know, aliens from somewhere that we never find out where kind of story which, you know, wraps up in the end and, and is of no significance to anybody or anything. <clears throat> it was certainly sort of grosser and more horrific than um, than one of those old one-and-done kind of stories would be. But other than that, it kind of had that shape. And so there was very little characterization, very little consequences. Um, and although I miss those kind of one-and-dones, it, it just felt jarring and out of place uh, in Detective Comics. <clears throat> and I, I certainly wasn't convinced by the need for the, um, that the Justice League really would have called in Gordon for this particular, quote, mystery. Um, but, you know, give them that conceit. The art was kind of cool, but it seemed more like the kind of art you would have on something like Swamp Thing rather than um, than a large a story with a large number of sort of classic superheroes. And it, so on that level, the art, while I would enjoy individual panels, didn't quite work for me. It just had a very sketchy, blotchy horror look, I guess. Um, yeah. Not a lot to say about this issue. Um, this does kind of... You know, I'm so much in Tomasi's corner, but I just feel like I have to make excuses for this issue that it was kind of filler. Um, and that's really all I have to say. I don't think it'll have any effect on Gordon's life or on Gotham or anything like that. And I guess a filler issue could be a lot of fun, but it... It just, I just felt the artificialness of it, and I just couldn't get into it or care about it. So, and seeing that next month is Robin War makes me think, I probably just shouldn't even buy the issue, next month's issue, and I should just wait till that clears up. Maybe wait till um, Bruce Wayne returns. So, I wonder what other people thought about this. I haven't seen anyone's reviews yet 
because uh, I've avoided them if anyone's put up Detective Comics reviews yet. <clears throat> but I was I was quite surprised because I I did like last issue quite a bit and um, thought that Tomasi was playing some interesting angles on the character of Bruce the current character of Bruce Wayne and the current character of Jim Gordon. But there was nothing of that here. So yeah, I will probably post this now. I think I'm not going to read read Batman Arkham Knight right now. Um, so if I do end up reading it right now, I will record another bit. Otherwise, I will post this. hope everyone who's reading Batman books is having a good time. Um, and I'll talk to you all later.